Hi guys, welcome to the PhD office. This is where I work. It looks pretty bare. It, th th that wall isn't representative. I could show you that bit, but I, I, you know, I'm a bit sensitive to the fact that I work with other people and they might not want all their stuff on camera. But this is where I work. I've moved all my video equipment in here because I've been doing a lot of shooting on campus, specifically for the Chapel Choir's debut album. I've been doing the artwork and photography for that, uh, which is coming out at the end of the month, which is very exciting. But it means that I'm now going to be vlogging here for the foreseeable future. So, you know, I'll see if I can tart up that wall. I'm still getting used to the idea of only talking about my life, uh, which is something, and by my life, I mean not the PhD and not books, which is the other the two series I'm kind of doing in parallel with this. Um, you know, it's, it's something, particularly when you get quite far along into your thesis, it slightly takes over your life. And I think a series like this is really important for me because it reminds me that there are other things to life that, you know, I can indulge myself in other activities. You know, just, just something as simple as going to see the movies, like just because it doesn't directly help either my YouTube channel or my thesis doesn't mean it's a bad thing to do. Just to quickly mention, I mean, the big thing that's happened to me recently was I went to Vienna. If you didn't see, I vlogged. That's a, that's a use for that wall. I'll put uh, further over, Simon. I'll put video stuff up here. Um, so yeah, I went to Vienna with Tom and presented my work, which was great. Um, and I've been having some really good meetings and stuff with my PhD supervisors recently and some great work. So the next PhD watch will be great. I'll also talk about PV and that. Um, and then the other stuff is a lot of singing um, because term's back and um, we're going to run up to this album coming out, which um, I'll probably be end, end up putting a video, actually like a video, music video, maybe one the track where I'm singing a solo in possibly on this channel um, as like a promo for it. So you'll see more about that. And the other thing that's going on, which is stuff that's happening in the future, is there's lots of exciting video collaborations coming up. Like I, There's a good four or five projects that are really, really exciting happening a little bit in the future, but I'm sort of organizing with other people now and can't wait to show you guys some of the stuff. Uh, the crash course this year isn't gonna be just me. Let's put it like that. It's gonna be me and another guy doing a crash course on a specialist subject, which is really, really exciting. Now, as I mentioned, um, I, I'm finding it difficult to sort of come up with things to talk about in these vlogs because I'm so used to just talking about my PhD. So I asked you guys on Twitter, I ran a poll, asking what I should talk about. And the winner by a small margin was recommending you uh, videos and articles that I've watched or read um, that I think you should read or watch. God, my English is really bad when I actually have to think about it like that. What I'd love you to do is go away and either read or watch these things, come back, or if you've already watched them or read them, uh, come back and comment and fight me in the comments about whether you think I'm wrong for loving it or if you agree not fighting me. Fight me in a loving way. First of all, three articles that I think you should read. First up, one which is a, quite a long one, but I found recently that was a very good one, which was um, about the scientific journey to fill in the part of the world's geological map before Pangaea. So working out, you know, the, the fact that continents drift all over the world, they coalesce to form a supercontinent called Pangaea, and then they sp split apart in the Mesozoic era, and then we have the current configuration. But before that, there was you know, other things happened, and um, this article goes through the science of what this team of scientists did to pick apart that puzzle and reconstruct what the world looked like. And um, yeah, it's really interesting. Next, kind of like a meta-academia thing, uh, something I found via Reddit, which was basically who's downloading pirated papers. Because most scientific journals these days, you know, you publish scientific research in a paper, those papers go in scientific journals, and more often than not, those journals put paywalls up. So you can't, nobody, you know, the public can access these articles, which is a whole issue in itself. Um, as an academic at university, the university pays a license, so we don't have to pay for journals, I can just you know, log into Wiley Online or Nature or Science or whatever, and I can see it. But not everyone has that opportunity. And this article asks the question about who's downloading them, you know, the pirated version, because there's a whole infrastructure for people downloading pirated scientific papers. The answer is basically everybody, but it's a bit more interesting than that. So that's one to read. Next, though, I'm going to recommend you three documentaries or documentary series to watch, which I think are like the the pinnacle of my interests, like literally the best things ever. If you want to get me as a person, watch these three. First up, Fermat's Last Theorem. This is an incredible documentary by the BBC uh, by Simon Singh, who also wrote a book about this. Um, and as the title suggests, it's about the uh, this famous theorem that Pierre de Fermat came up with, which is a number theory theorem. Uh, and it's an hour-long documentary about a guy called Andrew Wiles, who proved this, this theory um, in a way that this mathematician from the... Ooh, 18th century could never have predicted and it's a really interesting look at how how mathematical research works why people get really involved in mathematics 
you know, on an emotional level, the start of it is kind of unforgettable as a documentary, talking to Wiles about the moment he cracked it. Um, and, and also gives you a little bit of a primer to this aspect of number theory, but it's not technical at all. But yes, definitely watch it. Secondly, one that appeals to the filmmaking side of me, basically my favourite movie studio is Pixar. And I'm sure that's not a very controversial statement. Lots of people love Pixar. Um, but what a lot of people don't realise is that Pixar has a really, really interesting genesis and a story behind how it came into being. Um, so the Pixar story is a, is a feature-length documentary which follows the history of the studio, which basically means it follows a guy called John Lasseter, who was this utterly brilliant animator who started out working at Disney, and I'll spoil a little bit of it for you, was fired from Disney because he proposed these 3D computer animation. And by a complete bunch of luck, basically, he happened across a bunch of guys who were working on 3D animation, but from a technical perspective, not from an artistic perspective. They got together and they ended up making Toy Story, which you might have heard of. And the studio then went on to basically redefine how we look at animated films and kind of reshaped modern American cinema. Um, and it's a really, really interesting story. Um, I think it's available on Netflix, at least it is in some countries. If not, it's available elsewhere. Then lastly, for the documentaries that I feel like really define me, there's a BBC documentary, another one, um, which is a multi-part documentary. I think they are four hour long pieces called The Race to Space. And that's about the Americans and the Soviets trying to first get, a, get their hands on rockets and how they were divvying up the rocket resources of Nazi Germany, which is a really interesting story in itself. Um, then get a satellite in space, then get a man in space, then get a man on the moon. Now, a lot of people know the American side of things, specifically the moon landing stuff, but a lot of people don't know just how amazing the Soviets were. And in particular, their chief designer, a guy called Sergei Koryolov, who was just unbelievable. Um, and him and Werner von Braun, and it's a little bit of an example of great man history. Um, these two guys who, on the Soviet and the American side respectively, just defined the Cold War race to space. And it's a really, really well-made documentary series. It's like a retelling of events. It's like a dramatization. Um, and it's just excellent. Then lastly, I just thought I'd recommend some YouTube channels, uh, which have got some fantastic videos in that I've basically become addicted to. Um, first of all, one I've talked about before, Every Frame of Painting. That's every frame of painting when I'm not rushing, mum. My mum always used to tell me that I burbled. I just kind of talked and like stuff fell out of my mouth. My dad would call it verbal diarrhea. Every frame of painting looks at cinematography and editing and um, some incredibly well-made video essays. Um, I'll put one up here. Um, I'd recommend you look at the one on Jackie Chan, on another one on Edgar Wright and another one on Michael Bay and they're super insightful. And then another filmmaking channel. Um, this one has a, more of an emphasis on cinematography and directing, I'd say. Uh, it's channel Criswell, uh, another one up here. I would really recommend you watch his video on um, use of colour in film because it's one of the most poetic and informative pieces of entertainment on YouTube. Um, it's just it's just amazing. I there's several of these channels. I could recommend a whole heap of filmmaking channels, but I think those two are the best at the moment. Next, another channel which is, I guess, a bit more scientific, like the Race to Space side of me, um, called The Engineering Guy. Um, this is a uh, professor at the University of Illinois, I want to say, and he basically produces videos on things that you didn't think you'd be interested about. For example, like the design of the aluminium beverage can the aluminium, not the aluminum, and it's just, you never thought you'd watch a 10, 15 minute video on how cans are designed, but it's super interesting. A channel which I've only just heard about, um, and I've really waiting for the next video to come out, is called The History Buffs. This is a channel that combines my love of history and my love of films, and it basically takes historical films like Waterloo, um, Amadeus, Gladiator, stuff like that, and does a historical analysis and sees how accurate they are, and uses it to explore different themes and how we portray history. Um, and it's not quite as professional as, as some of the other ones, uh, some of the filmmaking channels in terms of its analysis, but I really like it, it's really good. One for the musicians out there, you've probably already heard of this, but just in case you haven't, there's an amazing channel called Postmodern Jukebox, which takes, like, modern, and when I say modern, I mean like 90s, 2000s, 2010s kind of songs, but redoes them in styles from the 1920s to the 1960s, um, like that one. Um, I really hope I remember to put these in in post. And they're really, really, really well made. And they're incredibly talented, the musicians that they get. They rotate in a cast of people. Um, yeah, go listen. You're welcome if you, if you didn't know about them. And then lastly, another filmmaking one. It's almost like I do more video making than PhDing, isn't it? Another channel which is called Red Letter Media. Red Letter Media do um, a variety of things. They're best known for the, their reviews of the Star Wars prequels, which if you haven't seen, and you like films, go and watch them because they eviscerate 
the prequels in the most glorious way. It's so cathartic. And it's a great way to learn about film theory, um, to see what movies do wrong, what movies do right. Um, my particular favourite at the moment is a series called Best of the Worst, where they take three crappy VHS tapes from the 80s or 90s and um, watch them and then try and decide which one of them was the best, which is difficult because it's like comparing three turds in cinematic terms. Yeah, I really, really like it. So yeah, links to all those will be down there. Um, hopefully they'll all fit in my pants. And I hope that this was interesting. It's the first video that I've done that's basically exclusively just recommending things because I'm struggling to think about things that aren't my PhD that I can talk about. If you know of any documentaries that you think I'd enjoy based on my recommendations, please put them in the comments and uh, come fight me if you think that my recommendations are trash. And uh, I'll be seeing you quite soon when I'm going to be doing uh, the PhD watch videos and the book club, which will be on Game of Thrones, uh, Song of Ice and Fire, and we'll also be revealing this new plan for the book club where we're going to be reading a book together. So I'm, re I'm actually really, really excited. There's so much great stuff going on at the moment. Probably better get back to write my thesis though, so um, see ya. See yourself out, will you? Ow! Oh! This is a completely different setting, um, what another one, uh, different math setting that we do in our repertoire. Um, this is by Jonathan Dove, um, who is a, um, a contemporary composer. He's still um, alive, unusually, for some of the composers. He, he, is, he, he is very alive, well I hope he is. Just as a way of giving people kind of strategies and ways of coping. So workshops on things like stress-busting exams, stress-busting, procrastination, perfectionism, the kind of common things.